energy drinks. We hear all the time that they're really bad for us, especially for teens, but we all drink them anyway. So were energy drinks really that bad? First, let's rewind back to 1997. The year Titanic came out in theaters and I looked like this. It's also when Red Bull became the first energy drink to reach the market in the US. Since then, energy drinks like Red Bull have skyrocketed in popularity. But things started getting intense in 2011 when the American Academy of Pediatrics, an organization of over 60,000 pediatricians, recommended that kids and teens should never drink energy drinks. The reason why they were so worried? Caffeine! They were also concerned about student athletes who were confusing energy drinks for sports drinks like Gatorade. But anyway, 2011 was a long time ago. So we emailed the AAP to see if things have changed. Their answer was no. They confirmed that the 2011 report was recently reaffirmed by the Academy. But caffeine is in a ton of things, like coffee, tea, soda, and even chocolate. And the dangers of caffeine really boil down to how much you have. A cup of coffee usually has between 95 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. So for adults, the experts recommend no more than 400 milligrams a day, and for kids, no more than 100 milligrams. All right, so a little bit of caffeine, probably not that bad, but high doses can be lethal. Yeah, it can kill you. So how much caffeine is actually in energy drinks to get all these doctors so worked up? Although the FDA doesn't require companies to list the amount of caffeine in beverages, many brands do it voluntarily. They're right there on the label. So in this little bottle, you've got 200 milligrams, you've got 160 milligrams in this can of Monster, and 114 milligrams in this Red Bull. But caffeine often isn't the only ingredient in energy drinks. There can be lots of other additives, like guarana and taurine. Dude, it's tor is it taurine? Guarana is a plant from the Amazon, and its seeds contain about double the amount of caffeine found in coffee beans. Taurine, on the other hand, is an amino acid, which, if you took notes in your biology class, you would know is a building block of proteins. It's in a lot of other things. It's even in our own nervous system, and it's often marketed as a performance enhancer. And then, of course, some of these drinks have a lot, a lot of sugar. And we all know how much sugar can lead to diabetes and obesity. So what does the research say about all of this? Well, in 2011, a paper published in the journal Pediatrics reviewed the effects of energy drinks on children, adolescents, and young adults. The paper looked at 121 reports, two-thirds of which were published in academic journals. And in all of this research, there are still two big unknowns. One. Does your age affect how your body responds to caffeine? And two, how do all these additives and caffeine interact with each other? Clearly, there's still a lot they're figuring out, but in the meantime, the experts warn that energy drinks could be especially risky for kids with heart problems, ADHD, or diabetes. So given all these concerns, it may come as no surprise that some places have pushed for completely banning the sales of energy drinks to anyone under the age of 18. As far as we can tell, that hasn't passed locally here in the US, but in 2014, Lithuania, well known for storks and hot air balloons, became the first country to actually ban the sale of energy drinks to anyone under the age of 18. But not everyone is a fan of these ideas. Some think these restrictions are unfair. If you aren't worried about selling coffee or tea to kids, why single out energy drinks? So, the American Beverage Association, the trade group representing many of these energy drinks, came up with another idea, voluntary guidelines for labeling energy drinks. So now that you know all this, how do you feel about energy drinks? Do you think there should be more regulation? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.